Okay, to celebrate the um, 500th anniversary of the Field of Cloth of Gold, which was um, running at this time in 1520, uh, and is featured in my book, first book, um, The Huntress, uh, by Anthony Spray, that's myself, um, I'm going to read out uh, a passage which is a flashback um, attributable to Diane de Boitier, who was present at the Field of the Cloth of Gold. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's part of chapter 10, uh, Calais. Um, um, and I'll just read it to you. Um, and we'll feature this as a, as a little featurette for Field of the Cloth of Gold 500. A large gaudy gold tent looms ahead with goldy flags, horsemen, jesters and noblemen everywhere. Behind me, as I turn, are a more unadorned and more austere canvas structure where the ladies of French court can be seen. The ladies sleep in a dormitory tent with the nursery adjacent. We all sleep in cots like narrow regular beds, about eight or ten of us to a chamber, with four or five beds per side like camp beds. <coughs> Up ahead, I cross to the feasting tournament tent across the courtyard. The wine fountain is in place, but it's not working due to a technical issue with the water wine pressure. The king is not happy about it. His most excellent engineers are looking at the problem. There are grandstands adjacent to the tilt yard, an English grandstand and compound opposite, the French to the south, English to the north. Inside the tilt yard, King Henry sits with Thomas More, the keeper of the king's signet ring, uh, at this stage to his right, dressed in dark colours. Thomas Cromwell, the Lord Chancellor, is in red to his left. Champions joust. At the grand finale, it is Henry VIII of England versus Francis I of France. This is entirely against etiquette, but neither absolute monarch cares about that. This is a sport. Henry is in white with the cross of St George surrounded by two roses in each of the four corners. He wears silver armour with gold gilding and decorations. Francis is in blue with gold fleur de lis with the same concept of shiny armour with gold trim. Francis is on a brown horse, Henry is on a black horse. Francis starts charging east to west, Henry gallops west to east. The first two runs they barely connect, so are draws. On the third run, Francis is again running east to west. Henry is running west to east. Francis strikes under Henry's shoulder blade with his lance, toppling Henry to the ground. Francis turns and rides back, dismounts and crosses to help Henry to his feet. Henry is fuming, but shakes Francis's hand and pats him across the shoulder. Henry gestures to his squire and his nobles and all head to the southern, French banqueting tent where the winner hosts. In the tent the English sit on one side, north, the French opposite, south, with a mixture on the connecting table to the east. The western side is open. Henry wears browns and burgundy colours with ermine trims, a squash brown and burgundy hat beret with a red feather. Francis is in a similar style but with blues and golds. Henry is flanked with Thomas Cromwell on his right and Cardinal Wolsey on his left. No women are present on his side. Francis, who likes his lady, sits with his mistress. Queen Claude is unwell and has retired to her chamber with some ladies in waiting. I am staying with both the Boleyn girls and Francoise, plus a couple of other ladies in waiting. A handful of other nobles are present. I have a small appetite and so eat very little. The food includes jellied pheasants and almond fancies. I am wearing a cream dress with an embroidered bodice, plain skirt, matching cream and black bonnet with my hair tied into a basket. Mary Blynn wears a blue dress with a white front to her bodice and her hat, red hair, pale skin, green blue eyes. Anne Boleyn is red burgundy with her blonde hair and blue eyes. Both to a dancing square area between the tables and especially in front of Henry a jolly jig twisting and turning. Mary is more exuberant. Henry watches intently, mesmerised by Mary. In the end, he stands up and claps, followed by the rest of the room. Cromwell and Wolsey move aside so that Mary could sit at Henry's right and Anne to his left. There are lots of giggling after this. Later, Mary introduces Henry to me 
and the others. Enchanté, he says. His eyes light up at me and kisses my hand. My tummy feels apprehensive at meeting Henry, but I just smile politely.